welcome to the Out of Bounds Gaming Channel. To launch the channel, we're going to start with a little bit of NCAA College Hoops 2K7 Franchise Mode, or as it's called in this game, Legacy Mode. Meet Daryl Stanley. Daryl Stanley was a former walk-on, turned two-time all-conference performer in not one but two different conferences as he helped lead the TCU Texas Christian University Horn Frogs for four seasons. He led them to winning records. In his first season, the team went 21 and 11. He helped guide them to the third round of the NIT tournament, which is the second biggest tournament in college basketball. The second year, they, they had a little bit of a dip sophomore year. They only won 18 games. Junior year, they picked it back up, winning 20 games. And then of course, the his senior year, the team really struggled as they moved to Conference USA. He did not. Daryl Stanley was still an all-conference performer, but the team only won 16 games. They lost 15. But of course, as you can see in these highlights, he was an excellent shooter, but really a incredible defender. Just an amazing two-way player and showcased his versatility where... If he wasn't the T if he wasn't TCU's best player on any given night, there was a good chance they weren't gonna win. He he was just that good. That of course led him to being drafted by the Houston Rockets as the 27th pick in the second round. So it wasn't a highly sought after prospect going into the pros, but the Rockets viewed him as an offensive spark plug, somebody who could come in, get buckets when they needed him off the bench, and then also play solid defense. And in the early days of, of the Yao Ming era, they needed to put some shooters around Yao. That's what Daryl Stanley was able to do. He was able to score seven points a game, two and a half rebounds, almost three assists, and over a steal a game. But all that came to an end when some lunatic went out and stole a truck and then smashed into him, causing severe spinal injuries and ending his career. This of course led him to physical therapy for over a year. After the physical therapy, he was given a position at his alma mater by a new head coach, Neil Daugherty, as an assistant coach, he got to spend two years learning under Coach Daugherty, helping him regain his love and passion that he had lost when his playing career came to an end. And now you can see him here. He's all swagged out in a suit because he was offered and accepted a head coaching job at Texas State University. Texas State has a beautiful campus located in San Marcos, Texas, which as you can see right here, is halfway in between Austin and San Antonio and approximately 200 miles west of Houston. However, prior to Coach Stanley's appointment as the head coach at Texas State, the team only had a 470 win percentage with only two NCAA appearances, with the last one coming in 1997. No NIT appearances, and then five regular season titles, two conference tournament titles. But the thing to really look at here is the fact that the team went three and 24 last season, one and 15 in conference. They were absolutely terrible. Next on our agenda here, let's get into the schedule. Let's just take a look at the games we have this season. We'll go into the calendar. Here you can see on the calendar, we have a season kickoff scrimmage also known as Midnight Madness. Each team has their own name they want to call it. But then there's the season preview show, and then you finalize the rosters. This is where we'll be able to cut players, redshirt players, etc. But we begin on November 9th, or yes, November 9th against the number 23 ranked Texas A&M Aggies. We then go and play the Texas Southern, or we play at home against Texas Southern on the 14th. Another home game against UT Pan American on the 18th. We then have Virginia Tech, which you can see it's outlined in blue, which means it's a tournament game. 
we have Virginia Tech on the 23rd. And then this is an important, important part of the schedule because the signing period starts. So you'll be able to sign recruits within the season, but it only lasts one week. So it's from the 26th to the 3rd. But we have Rice on the 29th and then Prairie View on the 2nd, which is a home game. We then have quite a while off before we play Baylor, which is in Waco. And then we have North Texas, followed up by UTEP, Texas Tech. Then we have another tournament where we play at Chattanooga. I'm not sure if that's where the tournament will be hosted, but we play Chattanooga there. We then have the University of Texas on the 1st, January 1st. We start the new year playing UT. That's going to be a tough one. We then, the, the red boxes are the conference schedule. So then we have Northwestern State, Central Arkansas, Southeast Louisiana, Nichols State, Texas A&M Corpus Christi, University of Texas San Antonio, Stephen F. Austin, Sam Houston State, and the University of Texas Arlington, and we have McNeese State, Lamar, and we do the Texas A&M Corpus Christi game once again, this time at home, and we go away for University of Texas San Antonio, Stephen F. Austin on the road, Sam Houston State at home. Then the in-season recruiting pro uh, portion of the schedule ends on the 25th of February. We then have one more game, the University of Texas Arlington on the 3rd of March. And then this week, the week of the 5th through the 11th, that's when the conference tournament will be scheduled. And then of course on the 11th, it's Selection Sunday, so we'll get to see whether or not we're actually uh, chosen to go to the NCAA tournament or any other postseason tournament. Then the week, the weeks after that are the tournaments. And then of course you see the trophy, which is the season wrap up. So we'll get to know who the national champion is then. Likely, not us, spoiler alert. Then there's the high school all-star game, which is like the McDonald's All-American game. And then the off-season recruiting process begins. So then we're able to recruit for, what is it, one, two, three, four, five weeks. And then we jump to the next season. So that's our schedule. As I said, we did have two tournaments on here. So we to see the other potential matchups, we have to go in here, look at the tournament tree, and see we're in the deodorant classic. I'm guessing they didn't get Old Spice's sponsorship or Gillette or any of the other name brand deodorants out there, but we're in the deodorant classic. So we play Virginia Tech in the first round. If we win, we play the winner of West Virginia, Montana. If somehow we're able to get past that, we would have to play one of the winners of either Arkansas, Southern Illinois, or Minnesota and Maris. So there's some really good teams in here. There's Arkansas, Minnesota, West Virginia, Virginia Tech, some big time programs. But even uh, Southern Illinois, Marist, Montana, they're nothing to sneeze at. They're pretty good teams in there. Let's go look at our other tournament, which is the, what is it called here? The Soda Pop Classic. So we play Chattanooga. This is only a two round tournament. We play Chattanooga and there's Alabama State versus Colorado State. And then the winner of that plays in the championship. I think we actually have a really good shot of winning this tournament. We could definitely upset Chattanooga. I don't even know if that would be an upset at that point. We could beat Chattanooga. And then 
I'm fairly confident Colorado State would run through Alabama State. So could we upset Colorado State in the tournament championship? I do believe we could. But that's the schedule. So let's go look at the options. We're going to use... Uh, let's look at the difficulties. The, the easiest difficulty is walk-on. Then there's starter, all-conference, all-American, and then mop. Which is what the computer is going to do to us every time we play them. They're going to mop the floor with us. Now, mop stands for most outstanding player, which is the award given to the best player in the NCAA tournament every season. So we'll use the hardest difficulty. We'll play 10 minute halves. We'll simulate the full game, the 20 minute halves. As far as game speed, player speed, free throw difficulty, and all this other stuff, I think we'll just leave everything as is. The only thing I'm going to change, because I read a couple things online, is the game speed. A lot of people said it just flows a lot smoother if you play on 100. So we will do that. I'm going here for the rules. We're just going to leave everything as is. In college, you foul out with five fouls, not six like the NBA. Everything's going to stay on. And the game sliders, we'll just leave everything at 50 for now for both the computer and the user. The only thing that's different is the team unity effects. They have them at um, 100 for both the user and the computer so we'll just leave that we'll leave that be but everything else is 50 all the way through now let's go over the recruiting process and how it works in this game so if we go in here we can see it says recruits map signings signings i'll just click on it here it just shows you who your school or other schools have signed which of course at this moment it's been nobody. The map allows you to look at the um, prospects based on the state that they are located in. And then of course recruits allows you to see the entire list. And then this, typically when I get into it, I just look at all the recruits and then you can sort it through while you're in this list. But here you can see it has the name, the year, and for the year, which is really neat about NCAA 2K7. You're able to start recruiting or demonstrating your interest in players all the way from their freshman year in high school, all the way through, even into uh, if players go to junior colleges, where you can then recruit them if they're a junior college freshman or sophomore. But of course, most of the time you're going to recruit seniors high school seniors, that, that'll be your main objective. And the high school juniors, you're allowed to put more of the task into the juniors than you can the freshmen and sophomores. But we'll go over that here as we go. Then of course you can filter it by position. And then the third category here is the distance. So there's MUN, which stands for municipality, which is the city. So that will be the prospects that are the closest to your program. Then of course there's local. Then there's regional. Local is everybody, if I'm not mistaken, it's within the state. Regional is within the state and surrounding states. And then of course national. And then there's world, which is international players. Then the rating system, it's a countdown system, five stars being the best or highest rated players. And it goes from five all the way down to one with one being the lowest rated players. And then of course, I think this is the most important part of this menu here is the interest percentage. It shows you how much interest these players have in coming to your program, which of course, all these top recruits have very little interest in coming to Texas State considering we're coming off of a 3-24 and season. But we can filter any of this stuff out. So if we want to look at the players who are the most interested in our program, we can do just that. And then of course if we go over 
it has camp, which in the off season there will be um, prospect camps. And you'll get to select between three different camps. And some of the prospects will be invited to these camps, which will help you with your scouting to be able to see uh, what they expect from a program or what they're looking for and just how good they are, their skill set. Then, of course, we can go over and look at the different categories in which they already have preliminary grades on them. But it, looking at that's a little crazy. It's easier if you just... Um, right click on or click down on the the right joystick or whatever it would be i'm playing on the xbox so whatever it is for the playstation but then you get to see the recruit card and there it will show you on the left hand side it will show you the grades you know i'll have the preliminary grades so for this player Jarrell fernandez who's the number one overall prospect it's a bunch of a's and a bunch of b's and his potential there's a double question mark. You'd have to actually start to recruit him to see more information there as far as getting the true grades. But in the recruit description, it typically tells you what the player is good at, what are their best qualities, and then recruit priorities. I think that's far more important because it will tell you whether or not a prospect wants to remain close to home, whether or not playing time is important to them. It gives you an idea of what they're looking for in the school. And then if you click the right button or R1, it'll take you over to the interest page. And this will show you on the left hand side, it'll show you the, the recruit tasks that you've completed on the player. And it will show you uh, next to it then the interested teams and the number of scholarships that are offered to the player. And at the bottom there, it shows you the meter of the player's interest. Once the recruiting begins, it will show all the different teams and kind of where that recruit is with the interest level at each school. So you'll get an idea of exactly where you're at compared to other schools. So let's say if we wanted to recruit Jarrell Fernandez, just click on him here. And to start, we're eligible to email the recruit, phone the recruit, and request game tape. So if we want to email, we can either do so through the head coach or one of the two assistants. And what it will do is there it doesn't take any, any points, but it does take some time away. And you can see each coach has a certain amount of free time. The head coach has 70, they all have 75 across the board. So you have to make sure you delegate the task appropriately. But once you do these three, you're then eligible to recruit them further, which is you can scout them at home. You can scout one of, rec uh, scout one of their recruit games. You can invite them to the campus. And then of course, offer them a scholarship. Uh, you get a total of 3000 recruit points and you roughly get to use around 250 per week. It says 254. It's just kind of a rough number there. But that's how the recruiting process works on this game. It's a lot more confusing, I think, just hearing about it than when you'll actually see it. It'll be a lot easier to understand once we get going and actually get into recruiting. But we'll do that in the next episode. I just wanted to kind of show how the process works right now. I'll quit rambling so you can meet the players in peace.
before we end this episode, let's actually see the players in action as we're going to do the Baskets, Burgers, and Bobcats game. Where I'm going to have it set up as the um, starters playing against the backups. And as you can see here, uh, there will be three guys on the bench. We'll put two, uh, Stallworth and Benton. We'll put them two on the bench for the reserves. And then Olsen on the bench with the starters. I think that kind of levels things out. And then we're only going to play a five minute half for this game just so we can see the players in action. You get to meet them. And now let's actually see how they play. We will do the most outstanding player, leave everything as is. But both sides are 58 overalls, slightly better offense with the reserves, slightly better defense with the starters. So let's see how everyone plays. So it's going to be Tolliver, McDowell, Maxiel, Madison, Brewer for the second unit. Bradford, Burgess, Brooks, the Killer Bees, along with King and Patrick for the starters. This is at the Strahan Coliseum, which is an interest squad scrimmage. And that's fun to say. I will say about uh, College Hoops 2K7, one thing that drives me absolutely insane is the spamming of the X button to try to win the jump ball. And you almost never win it, so this is kind of a waste. I'm just going to use the center Patrick and kind of roam around here on defense. Madison puts one up, Brooks with the rebound. Bradford over to Burgess to Brooks. Brooks with the pump fake. Out to King. Short. Maxiel with a beautiful drive to the basket. Antoine Maxiel, he's going to be the sixth man on this team. He has a tremendous ability. He's very similar to the undersized fours in modern day basketball as Burgess makes an incredible shot and then follows it up with a successful free throw. McDowell bringing the ball up for the second unit. Over to Tolliver. Brooks on Maxi. I think this is the most interesting matchup. It's two guys with 60 rating or above. Brooks being our highest rated player at 68. And then Maxiel is the highest rated reserve at 60. Brooks out for Bradford. Bradford misses. Burgess keeps it alive. I like what Burgess is doing. He's staying active here. Burgess Brooks. Brooks with the elbow jumper. And it's good. Ooh, a reach in from behind on our point guard Bradford. They made a substitution already. I need to go in and change those settings. I don't need the computer to make the substitution. I can make them. But we only have one reserve, so energy wise, I'm pretty sure we're going to run low fairly quickly. So this might be an ugly game. Bradford with another foul. He gets the tip on the inbounds pass. Gets it up ahead. Easy layup. We need guys to get back on transition de in transition defense. That didn't happen. Brewer with an offensive rebound. We're a very undersized team. Both the starters and the backups. Our tallest players are only Brewer and Patrick at six foot nine, and we took Patrick off, so we have King playing the center, and he's only six eight. There was Olsen who came on off the bench. Ah, he had the pass. Ooh, Burgess, that's a good foul. I mean, why give up the easy layup? Force him to make him at the line. Simeon Stallworth. He's going to be one of our two backup point guards along with Omar Tolliver. What we'll do with those two is we'll likely just ride the hot hand. 
whoever is playing better we'll go we'll go with them more times than not this offense is terrible everybody's jumbled up together there goes king down though nice little jump hook nine to four minute 27 left Oof, what the heck was that? Blocking foul on Olsen. Tolliver just ran straight into him. That was, that was wild. Oof, we almost had a steal there with Brooks. Bradford does come away with it. Up ahead to Burgess in transition. Burgess over to Brooks, wide open, top of the key. Mid-range jumper. Bring Patrick back on. Get King out of there. 11 to 4. Starters are ahead. Minute left in this first half. As Simeon just walks down the lane. And Bradford answers but blows the layup. Olsen with a great tip to cause the steal. Trying to get a pick going here. Burgess with the drive. Lefty hook. Or scoop shot, really. Not really a hook, more of a scoop shot. 13 to 6. Another reach and foul. We may not lead the league in anything, but we will certainly lead the league in fouls. Like, there might not be any other category we're great at. We will be incredible at hacking people. Brooks with a good drive. I do like that. I like the fact that we're able to get our defenders up in the air, drive to the basket. 15 to 6. For the second half, I am going to switch over and play with the reserves, see how some of those guys do. Play there by Bradford. He got in, dished it off to Olsen. Now Tolliver, to Madison. Madison get down, but down top of the key three. No good. Olsen, a good tip in. I think that was Patrick. Yep. 19 to 6. Starters are crushing it. We just have no rhythm on offense. Another miss three. Brewer with an incredible offensive rebound, but then blows the layup. And Tyler almost got the steal. Almost got another steal. We got the block though. We're out. Max seal for three, no good. Brooks for three, oh yeah. seen out of Brewer, but that was absolutely ridiculous. Why are we in... It looks like sometimes we come out in a zone. It's either that or our guys struggle to find their matchups. We're just wasting clock here. And they get the offensive rebound. Another offensive rebound. And a reach in foul on Tolliver. Ooh, Madison with the good tip. Tolliver gets it. And he flushes it. 
we need to get some defensive stops. Ooh, Tolliver with the steal. Madison for three. Madison no good. They're back. King with a great layup. Gets fouled from behind by Maxiel. Common theme on both sides. A lot of fouls. 25 to 8. This is a blowout. As the reserves cannot hit the ocean if they were standing on a beach. But they can hack. Man, can they hack. We need to get some reserves and some backups in here. Let's bring on Stallworth and Benton. McDowell's not hitting any shots. No need to keep him out there. Good steal. Up ahead to Max Seal. Can he take it? He can, but he'll miss it. Missing layups. Oof. 27 to 8. A minute 14 to go. Substitutes didn't even come on. That's great. Alright, let's get them in. Stallworth Benton. See what you can do for us. Currently, we have 13 players on the roster. With Benton being a true freshman, I think we're going to redshirt him. We'll go with 12 guys this year. Well, really think there's a big difference between 12 or 13 players of course it's just one mathematically but i think as far as what the impact that has on the team madison deep three he actually knocked it down 29 14. don't call it a combat because i advise you it will not be Olsen knocks that shot, 31-14. Madison, another three. Knocks it down. Back up power forward. Knocking in shots. Brewer with a reach-in foul from behind. That's new. Haven't seen that before, have we? Can we steal the inbound? No. King knocks it down. 33-17. Ball got tipped. 4.1 seconds left. Who should we go to here? Oh, doesn't matter. It was stolen. Bradford runs it out. So, the starter's 33 the backup 17. Let's dive into the stats here. 15 of 22 for the starters. 6 of 19 from the backups. Oof, what a major discrepancy. Although the reserves hit three three-pointers. The starters only hit one. We don't look like a very good three-point shooting team. I combined four of 13. Both sides or two of two from the foul line, so four of four in total. The big difference here, look at assist. Two for the backups, nine for the starters. Turnovers, five and four, about even. Fouls, five and five. The rebound, that was a huge discrepancy. Starters had 13, backups had four. And then steals, five and four. Blocks, one and nothing. Points in the paint. Only six for the backups, 14 for the starters. Bench points, seven and six, that really don't matter. Second chance points, 4-0 to the starters. And fast break was even, basically even, six to four. But let's look at the starters. Brooks had nine. He was four of four from the field. King had seven, three of four from the field. Olsen had six, three of four from the field. Burgess was two of four. Bradford 2 of 5, Burgess had 5 points, Bradford 4, and Patrick had 2. And rebounds, Patrick did really well, 5 rebounds in only 10 minutes 
or he didn't even play the full 10 minutes. He played 9 minutes. 5 rebounds in 9 minutes. On pace for a 10 rebound a game. It says Bradford had 5, Burgess had 4. Well done by the back, starting backcourt. Steals, Bradford 2, Burgess 2, King 1. No blocks. And then Bradford and King both had 2 turnovers. And then on the other side, Madison led the way with his two three-pointers he hit. He had six points, one rebound. Stallworth had four points, two assists, which isn't bad considering he only played five minutes. So, very productive in the time he was out there. Benton had three points. He hit a three-pointer. That's basically all he did besides turn the ball over twice. Tolliver had two. Maxiel had two points, one rebound. McDowell didn't score. Brewer did not score. Brewer led the way with only two rebounds. Madison and Maxiel each had one. Stallworth had two assists. The only two assists for the reserve. And Tolliver had three steals. That's pretty impressive. That might be the most impressive stat coming out of this game. And Brewer had one as well. Who got the block? McDowell got the block. That's crazy. Our 6-5 backup shooting guard with a block. And then Benton had two turnovers, Tolliver, Stallworth, Madison, each with one. I was quite impressed with the, that was the, um, Basket, Burgers, and Bobcats game. Thank you all for joining me for this first episode, the first video of the channel. Um, I know there was a lot of rambling on and it was a little choppy, but it will get better over time. I do appreciate you watching the video and if you don't mind please hit the like button comment down below share with your friends and subscribe to the channel uh, hopefully you'll enjoy this series as well as any and all content that I put out moving forward but above anything else I just appreciate you watching this one so thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one